When considering the topic of inequality, we look at the work of two economists called Max Lorenz and Corrado Gini. Max Lorenz was an American economist and Corrado Gini was an Italian statistician and economist. And together they developed a diagrammatic representation of inequality that was known as the Lorenz curve alongside the Gini coefficient. So what we will draw is we will draw a diagram to show that. So we draw a pair of axes. And what we're looking at is the cumulative percentage at the top here of income, or it could be wealth in our economy. And across the horizontal axis, we're looking at the cumulative percentage of households. So I'm just abbreviating that across there. Obviously, in the real exam, you would be writing that out in full. The principle of their analysis is that if 20% of households had 20% of the income and 40% of households had 40% of the income, you would have a situation where you had something known as perfect equality, i.e. the situation within that economy was very fair, very just, perhaps taxation was used in a very, very fair and just manner, and redistributed income so that income was equally shared. I'm sure you can appreciate that that is not going to happen in economies. Economies don't tend to be perfect in that way. But we could call that the line of perfect equality, i.e. there is perfect equality of income and wealth. Now, through a lot of their work, particularly the work of Lorenz, they discovered that obviously that wasn't the case, and it may well be that this 20% of households here only perhaps had 6% of the income or wealth within an economy, and perhaps the 40% in the economy only had 12%. And so as you can see, if we were to join these red dots together and continue that on, we might get a shape that bows out from the line of perfect equality that is known as the Lorenz curve, named after, as I've said, Max Lorenz. The more that the Lorenz curve bows away from the line of perfect equality, the more unequal the percentage of income or wealth is distributed amongst the population. And so if I was to draw another blue line here, this could represent and could be used in an exam situation to show how things have changed over time. Or indeed, if you wanted to show how different economies had different levels of inequality, you could show that a country, as represented by the blue Lorenz curve, was much more unequal in terms of its distribution of income and wealth than the country potentially as shown by the red line. Now, that's all well and good, but Lorenz and his colleague Jeannie looked at this and said that perhaps what we needed was a way of mathematically representing that situation. So if I was to go back to my black and create a triangle, and you can see I've now got a triangle bounded by the uh, horizontal axis, the line I've just drawn, and the line of perfect equality, they considered that there was a mathematical way of working out the extent of inequality. So if we consider just the red line for a moment, and we were to consider that the area inside that red line between the line of perfect equality and the Lorenz curve was A, and everything else in that triangle was B, then the Gini coefficient could be calculated as A over A plus B. B. Now, mathematically, that was a way of working out the percentage or the level of inequality. And depending on whether you use that in real or percentage terms, you will end up with a number of either 0 to 1 or 0 to 100 percent. Now, obviously, if there is no A, you would have a number of 0. And if you had perfect equality, the Gini coefficient would be zero. And the higher the number becomes, the more unequal your economy is in terms of its distribution of income. At last, data I looked at for Gini in the UK were between sort of 35 and 40 percent. 
not as high as perhaps you would see in some South American and Latin American countries, but certainly higher than some more uh, egalitarian economies in Eastern Europe that since communism have perhaps been more fair in their distribution of income. The other way that you can use this diagram is to compare the situation between income and wealth. And certainly in the UK, if we looked at those two lines on the diagram there, then perhaps the blue line might represent wealth and the red line might represent income because certainly in the UK, wealth is far more unequally distributed amongst the population than income itself is. And remembering that income obviously is a flow concept, whereas wealth is a stock concept and wealth accumulates over time and is often the result of inherited assets passing down through the generations. So you can use this to illustrate and also explain the concept of inequality and used together, the Lorenz curve and the Gini coefficient can be used to show quite a lot in terms of how the government can view its inequality position and also then perhaps to explain how it can use taxation, perhaps through the use of more progressive taxes, to equalise the equality of income and make it a little bit fairer.